Today I'm going to talk about how come you fell for the narcissist or how come you keep falling for the narcissist. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. You know, a lot of us have come from childhoods that had an unfair advantage and there was some form of dysfunctionality on some type of level in perhaps many of our homes. For instance, maybe you were raised by uh, a narcissistic mother or father or both parents were narcissists. My mother was a narcissist and that was a very challenging childhood that I had. Or you could have siblings that are narcissists or relatives that are narcissists. Another thing could be that maybe there was alcoholism in your family. Either parent or both parents had problems with drinking and abuse. And maybe you grew up in a very angry household. Or maybe you had a household where there was very little communication between uh, family members from the parents and even the siblings. Um, and I know in my family, we're all Italian. My parents are both from Italy. And there was a lot of uh, flailing of hands and, you know, hand motions and signals and uh, a lot of cursing too. And so that was pretty prevalent in my upbringing. And then perhaps you had dismissive parents or parents that kind of left you alone or what we used to call a latchkey kid where come home from school and you use your key and you were basically alone. So you were either watching TV or on the internet, that kind of thing. So, you know, we can't choose our upbringing. So we end up as children learning to uh, develop mechanisms to cope with the dysfunctionality of our family, such as to uh, lay low or placate. And um, maybe sometimes we even take the blame or we'll try to fix something or we'll ride out the storm and wait for things to, to blow over and we'll internalize our feelings and not say anything. We learn to be quiet, right? And so these are the things that we've grown up with in learning how to develop some type of uh, emotional growth, but it's, it's a hit or miss type of thing because if you have emotionally unhealthy parents or family members uh, or life situation, lifestyle, that's going to greatly hinder your emotional maturity as well. So here you go, flash forward to your adulthood, you carry with you those tendencies to uh, take the blame, try to fix things, uh, placate people, internalize your feelings, lay low, ride the storm. Am, am I speaking to anyone here, right? And so when you meet the narcissist and, uh, entrance the narcissist right stage right entrance narcissist so you're not familiar with the narcissist mo but you are familiar with dysfunctionality and you've learned and developed your skills of how to cope so when the narcissist who you don't know is a roaring lion there's a bible verse and i want to read that to you because it so describes the narcissist and what they are like. And it's from God's word. And it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's the narcissist. They're not looking for what you and I are looking for. They're not looking for, you know, a partnership, a friend, um, somebody to have a close, vital, loving relationship. They're looking to devour you. And so they see in you, you may be an empath, a good person, a Christian, but you still haven't had the proper training on how to handle emotional situations. And so the narcissist, oh, always observing their prey like a lion observing his prey, right? And he sees these things in you. 
where you try to fix things. You're, you're ever ready. You'll blame yourself. You go above and beyond. You, you're the, the, the go-to person, right? And so when you start to get in a relationship with a narcissist and they start to do their, well, initially the love bombing, you're like, wow, this is great. You know, a loving situation, a loving environment. Wow, I'm getting all everything that I want and need, but it's fake. This is this is the lure. This is the hook. They're looking to hook you. And so they have this shiny little, you know, tantalizing little uh, lure here to get your, your attention and then to hook you. And then once you're hooked, as you know, then comes the belittling, the berating, uh, the judgmental, the criticizing, putting you down, all the things that they do because they want to hurt you. They want to make you suffer because it brings them great glee and happiness in their sick minds, right? Their twisted minds. And they play this push-pull game with you. They give you a little love, then they pull back and they belittle you. Then they give you a little love and push-pull, push-pull. And you don't know how to handle it. You find yourself trying to, you know, convince them that, you know, hey, these are my feelings and they're valid. And then he or she will put them down. And then you try to uh, do this persuading. You tr you get angry. You Then eventually you, you start to even blame yourself like it Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one. You know, in a mutually respectful relationship, you should not have to plead. You should not have to, you know, bang your fist somewhere on the wall or something and pull your hair out and uh, try to convince somebody to treat you with love, respect, and kindness like you deserve. You should not have to do that in a healthy relationship. But we didn't grow many of us didn't grow up in a healthy environment again as a child dealing with the alcoholic parent the narcissistic parent you know relatives that were kind of out there too and so you you haven't been properly educated on how to deal with the dysfunctionality other than what you've learned along the way that you brought from your childhood but now you're here on this channel because you suspect something is off with this person, not just off, but really off. And so you're suspecting they're a narcissist, so good for you. Now you're starting to learn the MO of what the pattern, There's that, that is a key point here. When you start, stop excusing the narcissist and you start noting, you make your own little mental notes, even write them down too. I, I love writing things down, hence my paperwork here. But it, it helps to give clarity when you start noting the pattern and the narcissist becomes very predictable at some point where you are writing it down, you can almost go, yep, the, that's the next thing that's going to happen there. Oh yeah, okay, th yep, that, that was the next thing that's going to happen. And it's a pattern of abuse that you don't deserve. So what do you do moving forward? So you never have to say again, how come I keep falling for a narcissist? Well, the great thing that you're doing is you're learning the MO of the narcissist through this channel, through other channels, and you are now in your awakening. That's your awakening. So moving forward, when you start seeing these characteristics, you're gonna, that aha moment's gonna happen like this. And you're gonna be, mm-hmm, okay, I see where, I see what this is. And that is a fantastic thing. However, you're going to need more than that. That's right. And you're going to need your enlightenment. And that enlightenment can only come from the greatness of God's word. You know, there's a verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 22, and it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And if God's word says it's going to set you free, you better believe it's going to set you free. And the first important thing for you to know is that in this world, we have an enemy. That's right. We have an enemy, the devil, and the other devil spirits that are under him. But you must also know we have a savior. 
That's right, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And many of you are most likely born again already, but if some of you are not who are watching this, confess Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And it says that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you get instantaneously born again, eternal life, Holy Spirit within you. And I want to quote a beautiful verse to you. It's in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. And it says, the thief, who's the thief? The devil. The thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come, Jesus Christ is speaking, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Look at the two stark statements. You have the enemy, the devil, who's also called the thief, who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Can you list some of the things the narcissist has done to you where he or she tried to steal, kill, destroy? And that includes your peace, your joy, your happiness, all the great qualities that you are, your patience, your kindness, they have just worn away at you. But the second half of that verse is your deliverance. Jesus Christ has come to give you life and give it more abundantly. The enemy, the thief, the devil takes, but Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, he gives and he gives abundantly. You know, we may not have been officially trained in the art of um, emotional maturity and skill and communication. However, you have a wonderful, loving, kind heart there, and God has a lot to work with you. And his word says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, this is God speaking to you. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So God wants you to be wise. He wants you to be to be prudent. He wants you to know that you know what's going on. But stay that beautiful self that you are, that harmless as a dove. When, when you were with that narcissist, did you find yourself like losing your patience, wanting to retaliate, um, just being so full of ang anger, bitterness, hurt, and in pain and confusion? And you, that's not who you are. That is not who you are, but the, the narcissist is gleefully doing that to you to take you off your path, your truth, your destiny, so that you don't spend any time worshiping your one true God. That's right, because the narcissist who's demonically driven, that's who he's listening to in his ear or her ear. And the whole purpose is the devil wants to, again, steal, kill, destroy, and steal the worship you want to give to your heavenly father. That's right. And it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I want you to hear from this verse that God, you're the chosen of God Almighty and you are holy and you are beloved. You are an amazing child of God. The narcissist just wants to tear you up like a roaring lion and devour you with cruelty and belittling and demeaning. Look at the beautiful words God uses to describe you as his child, that you have been chosen of God, holy and beloved. And it says, hang on to your heart of compassion. Hang on to your kindness. Hang on to your humility. Humility is one thing the narcissist will never have. They're just devoid of any of, the, any of these great fruits of the spirit, gentleness and patience. You know, we witness a lot of things in this life. And there's a lot of opposites that we see and we all make choices. God gave each one of us 
the freedom of will to make our choices. You made the choice to be a child of God. You made a choice to be loving, kind. You made a choice to be an empath. You made a choice to do good in the world. The narcissist also made a choice. He or she made the choice of being that evil, wicked person who listens to the demonic voices. They made a choice. You are light. They are darkness. You have no fellowship with that. Detach and recognize once again who you are and rebuild yourself. And I made a little list of opposites in this world that we see. We see good versus bad light versus darkness, love versus hate, pleasure versus pain, care versus neglect, thankful versus covetous, giving versus taking, kind versus spiteful. And I want to leave you with this last verse. If any of you say, well, you know, Nanette, I still don't have that kind of wisdom. I want to be wise moving forward. Well, God's going to abound that wisdom to you. And the more you start listening to these verses, reading them every day, and watch the videos here, they have, they're loaded with scripture, scripture to build you up, to help you to see who you truly are through God's eyes. And in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So I want you to take courage. I want you to know that moving forward, you are being enlightened by the truth of God's word. And you're no longer going to say, how come I keep falling for a narcissist? Because now you had your awakening. You're having your enlightenment. You know what God's word says. And you have been set free. So I want you to leave your comments down below. Tell me what other uh you know, opposites you can think of other than the ones that I mentioned. And if you have Bible verses, do share those as well. Share your comments, your heart, and your prayers as well. So if you found this helpful, do hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.